Hi, and welcome to another Doula Coffee Break. My name is Sean Lankford, Technical Yacht Manager at Doula Yachts, and I'm joined here today with our Fleet Technical Manager, Piers Flood. We're going to talk to you a little bit about a five-year maintenance plan for yachts um, to give owners and captains uh, an overview of what to look for um, with their vessel over a five-year period. Piers, could you give us a little more description on that, please? Yeah, sure. We're responding in effect to a gap in the market, a need in the market. It's come to our attention that a lot of owners and their management teams and some crews don't really have a forward projection over the medium term, over five years, on what they should expect in terms of significant maintenance periods, significant maintenance costs, which leads on to when the yacht would be available. So what we've done is develop a five year medium term plan that outlines major maintenance expectations tied in with class and regulatory compliance requirements and also a budget of costs, giving owners and their teams the ability to look ahead, forecast and make sure everything's in place for these planned maintenance periods. Mm -hmm. So looking at this from an owner's point of view, will this give us a, a schedule of when we can actually enjoy the vessel and or when the vessel can be chartered out? Exactly, that's what we're trying to do. So owners want to use their vessels or charter it out quite often. Um, so it's important they know up front when the vessel will be available. So rather than go to an owner and say, look, here's a defined start of the month, end of the month, your vessel has to be in maintenance there. We're looking ahead and giving a date range. So we know roughly within a yacht's time um, frame of operation, based on when it has to comply with certain class and flag regulations when it needs to be inspected. Mm -hmm. And we're normally timing maintenance periods to those. Mm -hmm. But looking ahead, it gives you some flexibility. So you might want to delay or extend some of these periods. You might want to do a short period one year, longer period the next year. But you can only do that if you can plan ahead. And we're trying to give owners the ability to plan this ahead, this foresight. Right, okay. Good. And so re with regards to that, um, would this five year plan also give a financial forecast? It, exactly. So tied into when the yacht's available, when the yacht's available, we'll be able to identify based on the yacht's condition, what is likely to need repair, replacement, upgrading over that five year period. Mm -hmm. So that enables us right from the start to put rough euro values against each maintenance period. Mm -hmm. So you might have a heavy period one year, but the next three years be fairly light. Mm. So for owners and their management teams, it gives them the ability to plan ahead for cash flow. And you don't therefore end up with a horrible situation where an owner is about to go into a refit mm. and suddenly they've got to find one, two, three million euros. Yeah. Um, so it's really enabling, giving, if you like, owners tools to plan ahead and work out their cash flow. Yeah, okay. So with regards to um, major engineering um, replacement of, of machinery, what advice can you give uh, on upgrades uh, and whether they're correct or, or value for money? I think each job is unique, each owner is unique. So I think first of all, we want to look at what, what is the owner's appetite for investment. Some owners want the absolute perfect yacht, everything absolutely up to the minute and they have fairly flexible budgets. So they might want the best of everything. Our job then is to forecast what is going to be the best of everything. It might be they want to voyage in a different area. So maybe they need new equipment for us treating black water, grey water that they haven't currently got on board. Mm -hmm. Some owners might be very strict financially. So they might want everything looked at on a very commercial basis, you know, return on investment or is this machinery I'm purchasing going to really improve the yacht, perhaps improve the asset value or not? So depending on what the owner wants, depending on what the regulatory areas that the boat is cruising in, it gives us an ability to give an owner information on which to make a decision based on their circumstances. Mm, okay. So um, with regards to that sort of work being done, obviously that would need a fair amount of yard time. So when dealing with yards, what is it that you look for? What's the process of choosing the right yard? I think we've seen a, a change in the choice over the years. Um, the industry has grown very quickly. There's a large number of vessels out there now and the size has grown. Mm. So we see a lot of yards got bigger to be able to handle bigger tonnage, dried up bigger tonnage. 
we see on the yards that have stayed relatively the same, but are very busy with lots of perhaps medium sized yachts. So I think we need to be very careful and um, understand exactly what the owner is seeking. Is it quick turnaround or is it more extensive major work? Is the yacht going to need to be dry docked? So is there a facility there? But also we need to go a bit deeper because of the sums of money involved. So how much does this refit yard rely on subcontractors? Yeah. Is it in-house workforce? What's their warranty like? Mm. Is it far enough away that you ought to spend a lot of money steaming there? Mm. Or is a closer yard that's on the surface more expensive better? Yeah. Um, what are other yards in the same area going to quote you for the same work? Because there is a difference. Yeah. So there's a lot of factors we look at to try and make a well-reasoned commercial decision and suggestion which we can offer the owners and the management team mm. rather than just, oh, this yard's down the road, it looks good. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So um, obviously, you know, a major part of, of yard time might be paintwork. Yes. Um, so one question we get a lot is how often should this be done within that five year plan? Paint is such a subjective subject. Um, yeah, we've seen the same yacht in the morning light look beautiful. Mm. Hard sunlight on it in the afternoon, you notice the paint doesn't look quite so good. But a lot of that's subjective. So we are trying to take out the subjectiveness and actually get some objective um, qualification on how good the paint is. Mm. So we would recommend normally five years is about a reasonable time for a paint job to okay. last. Some last a lot less, some last a lot longer, depending okay. on a number of factors. But the only real way to tell whether you actually need to repaint is to have a good survey done. Yeah. Get some gloss measurements, some paint thickness measurements, whole host of other measurements from an expert using proper instrumentation to determine what is the status of this. And from that, you can then make a decision. Is it worth sacrificing the time and the money yeah. to do a paint job? Or can it be left a little while? Yeah, OK. So what would you look at when choosing a paint contractor? Uh, and what would you have going on the side of that? So for example, paint spec, um, paint surveyor, etc. I think, as you mentioned, the key, the key to it is a good paint spec. If everyone understands what the current status is and what is trying to be achieved, mm -hmm. then everyone can work towards that. Mm -hmm. Certainly, we would suggest a, a specialist paint surveyor is used because their expertise, their knowledge, and most importantly, perhaps when it comes to the crunch on their support of the owner with good technical argument can be absolutely vital. Yeah. Um, the paint contractor themselves, I mean, depends on the scope of work being done. If it's a small patch job, then you might do very well with a small team of really enthusiastic, skilled paint sprayers. But on the other hand, if you're doing a complete hull, complete superstructure respray, then it's potentially going to be a million, two, three, four million euros job. Mm. So you're looking at a much more commercial approach. What is the size of the company? Can they stand up to a big warranty claim of several hundred thousand euros if it goes wrong? Do they have the resources? Do they have the workforce? How do they tie in with their subcontractors? Because they might be good paint sprayers, they might be able to scratch up a whole prep it beautifully, mm. but they need a team of scaffolders, tenters, people who provide heat, lighting, filtration. All these factors need to be considered mm. to find out who is best for this. Yeah. And I know a bugbear for everyone is fittings. I mean, deck crew in particular have seen paint contractors, subcontractors take off fittings and lose them. <laughs> so we need to make sure whoever is contracted for this whole painting package has a good fitting removal company. Mm. And when time comes to put these back, everyone knows where they are and they're fitted back correctly. Yeah. Um, I always say painting is a bit like baking a cake. Yeah. You know, once the paint project's underway, it's like a cake in the oven but you need all those different ingredients correctly mixed in before you commit to a paint project or start baking your cake yeah. for the project to come out correctly. Because yeah. there's no way you can change things halfway through. No one wants a bad paint cake. Yeah. <laughs> Very good, thanks Piers. So that's the end of our coffee break for today. Um, hopefully you found that of interest. And uh, if you've got any questions regarding Doula's five-year uh, uh, five plan, please get in contact with us. 
uh, and as well as any other technical issues, um, we're here to answer your questions as well. So thanks for being our audience and uh, we'll see you on the next coffee break. Cheers. Thank you.